Well, now, Fabius. These quill pins are well sharpened. Your ink all mixed. We want good readability. This will be a letter to the seven churches, Fabius. Here's one. Good arithmetic. Nine copies is just what we'll need. Seven in Greek, one in Aramaic for me, and one in Latin, just in case. Now, Papias, don't, don't, don't start crying hand cramps again. From all those copies of the Acts of the Apostles you made, I, I know you have fingers of iron. <laughs> now then, John, the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be to you, peace, from him who is and who was and who is to come, even our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. I received your letters with joy and gratitude. My thanks for your willingness to, to help the prisoners, uh, deepest thanks, make that deepest thanks for your willingness to help the prisoners here at Patmos Penal Colony in the ways that I've described. Timothy will send deacons to you from Ephesus. Well, what you, you, you've arrived early. Splendid, splendid. I, I, I wasn't expecting you so soon. Well, uh, uh, how, how was the crossing from Ephesus? Rough, Wendy? Yeah, yes, yes, well, it usually is. I, um, I trust the Roman guards down at the pier were not too uh, troublesome. Oh, they searched you, did they? Yes. Well, they're looking for scriptures. Or those uh, newfangled fish amulets that you're wearing nowadays. <laughs> you know, if the, the Roman commander here ever really decides to enforce the anti-Christian edict, many of you would have to decide how much of a Christian you really are. You see, if you refuse to sacrifice to their divine emperor, Domitianus. You'll be admitting you're a Christian, and these Romans can kill you. So, until you learn your way around this, this dangerous Roman world, please be careful. You, you've come a long way to see me. I'd hate to lose you now. <laughs> Where's Timothy? Down in the camp. Nothing, no trouble, is it? Ah, distributing the food. Good, good. Well, welcome to Patmos. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful Patmos. I, I wasn't laughing when the Romans brought me here two years, well, nearly three years ago now. Put me down in the rock quarry, cutting stone. I was 84. Dawn to dusk hours and human conditions would have finished most men my age quite quickly. Life expectancy of the young inmates is hardly more than a year. But all my life, I've been healthier and Harder to kill than an Egyptian crocodile. <laughs> and let me tell you, beloved, the Romans kept a close watch on me, too. Afraid I'd make a break for it. <laughs> and I, I, I admit, I, I was not a model prisoner. You see, all day long as I held the cutting chisel, I'd be telling the man swinging the hammer all about Jesus. <laughs> Before the Romans knew it, I'd converted half the inmates and five guards. <laughs> That's when the commander found me out, shut me up in this cave. Surprised me. Could have killed me. When he didn't, I got suspicious. I got in touch with Timothy in Ephesus, asked him to find out why. Well, <laughs> it, it seems that the commander here has orders not to kill me or even hurt me. The procurator in Ephesus is afraid that if anything happens to, to that Christian sorcerer, that there'll be riots in the streets. Riots, can you imagine that? And he may be one of those people who've heard, I'll never die. Now, no, no, that, that rumor got started because of something Jesus said to Peter about me, but later on the Romans tried to boil me in oil. The Lord Jesus delivered me and the rumor really spread. <laughs> I, I, I've just never been able to stop it. Of course, now, now that I'm 86, and I still feel like 26, but I'm beginning to wonder myself. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> oh, the, the Romans, they, they don't understand us Christians. Right, when I die, I want a celebration. Can you imagine what the, what the Romans will think of all the praising God at my funeral? Oh, they'll be there, just to make sure I am. <laughs> oh. but, but I, I'm glad I'm still in the fight, beloved. If there's battle smoke, I want to smell it. Of course, there's precious little of it in this cave. No, no, I'm not complaining. I, I, I'm not complaining about it. I have all the amenities here. It's musty and damp, but it's roomy enough as caves go. It's big enough to chase pneumonia around in. <laughs> and catch it. But I'm not complaining. I, the Romans have given me their latest style in furniture, as you see here. Romanus Prisanus. <laughs> this piece I'm sitting on should be called Romanus Porcupinus. <laughs> but I'll turn. Oh, what? And the Romans allow pets. Cave rats you could ride to market. Oh, there go two of them now. Oh, I, I call these two Annas and Caiaphas. They're always together. <laughs> I missed them again. I, I've given them all names. Herod stays back in that area over beneath there. And Pontius Pilate sneaks back and forth, back and forth underneath there. Sometimes at night he comes out while I'm asleep and does my toenails. Hey. Where was I? Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, when I found out I had an inch, was fairly safe here. I, I immediately took a mile. I arranged for Timothy to begin to visit me from Ephesus. And soon he was carrying supplies and then letters and then visitors back and forth. And then his young friend Papias here agreed to stay on, be my helper. Beloved, we've got a regular scriptorium going here. It's true, it's true, right under the Romans' noses. And that's a lot of shade. <laughs> we copy out the epistles, the Acts, the three Gospels. We get them to Timothy in Ephesus, and he, he secretly distributes them to the seven churches. And they're used in the, in the training of my beloved young missionaries. Oh, beloved, I'm, I'm so, I'm so glad I can still be useful. And I'm, I'm glad that you, you've come to visit me, too. D did you know that the, the churches have even asked me to write a gospel? Can you imagine that? They, they call it a gift that only I can give. I, I suppose they mean by that that, as far as we know, I'm the last living disciple that saw the Lord. Now, of course, Luke is still with us. Oh, thank God for that. Thank God. He, his letters are such a strength, such an encouragement to me. But, of course, Luke, who wasn't with the Lord, now, now he hears Jesus, but, but he wasn't with us. I, I, I told the churches that as far as I could see, Matthew, Mark, Luke were as complete and accurate a record of Jesus' acts and words as our faith would ever need. I, the youngest, least, least worthy of the disciples, I, I just, I should not presume to add to it. Fabius, Fabius, bring your eyes over here. Look, 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 look down there. C coming up the cliff path from the quarry. You see that? It, well, I know, I know it's a Roman, Fabius, but can you make out who it is? The penal colony commander. Well, now what have I done? <laughs> uh, I, 
I, I, I can't think of anything new. <laughs> you know, it, it could mean that, that he's decided to listen to my proposal for helping the prisoners. Yeah, yeah, just a, 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 Pappies, put those epistles of Peter's way, way back there in that trunk in the dark, and, and those new papyrus copies of Luke's Gospel. Put, uh, no, wait. Put a copy of Luke's Gospel right here. Yes, 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 right in the open where they can see it. Of course he'll confiscate it. <laughs> well, Commander, Commander, come right in. Come right in. Sit down, sit down. Stand, if you prefer. <laughs> yes, Commander. Yes, I believe I do have a working proposal on the prisoners. All right, sir, here it is. Those walking skeletons you have down there in that quarry, they'll never cut enough marble to earn their keep, much less make you a profit. Not as long as you keep them sick, demoralized, starving, but let me give them some decent food, warm clothes, a good place to sleep. Give them enough hope to believe they'll, they'll live long enough to, to, to be released. And, and then you'd, you'd have a work crew that would, that would cut marble for you, Commander. You'd, you'd see some of that profit you're supposed to get. No, 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 no cost to you. We, we, we'll provide everything. Who is we? Well, let's, uh, well, let's just uh, say uh, some friends of mine on the mainland. <laughs> Never mind if they're Christians or what they are, Commander. You just get us a Roman quartermaster seal. We'll stamp every shipment with it. The minute it gets to the pier in Ephesus, right aboard with no difficulty. Keep, keep your secret. Commander, keep our secret. If, if this thing is ever discovered, all you get is a mild reprimand. I, I get the slow boil in oil. <laughs> you know, the Lord Jesus delivered me from that once, Commander. I know, I know I've told you about that, but I, I, I just want you to know I don't want to tempt him again. <laughs> profit! Profit! How much of your profit do I want? You pagans are all alike. You cannot believe that anybody would want to do something for somebody else simply because it's, it's, all right, I will say it, because it's the Christian thing to do. <laughs> you and your cynical Roman disregard for the value of human life. I tell you, Commander, if I did not have perfect control of my temper, I... <laughs> I... I beg your pardon. I, I, I beg your, your forgiveness. This infernal temper. It has been my lifelong curse. I, but I will discipline it if it is the last thing I do in this life. Next time it may be. <laughs> I see. All right, Commander, you've, you've heard my proposal on the prisoners. I don't want a widow's mite of your money, but I do want to help those men down there in that quarry. Now, now you want promotion and gold. Do yourself a favor. Say yes. Good. Good. You may be closer to the kingdom than you know. Oh, yes, yes, we'll keep you completely informed, Commander. Yes, Timothy will be in touch with you. Scroll. Uh, what scroll? <laughs> oh, oh, that scroll. Well, it was just uh, something I was reading. Why? But, yes, 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 it's Christian. It's Christian. How can I deny it? No, a friend of mine named Luke. Commander, now you, you're not going to confiscate this one, too. You, you have my copies of Matthew and Mark, and you never return anything. <laughs> but, uh, all right. All right, all right, what can I do? But go mad in this cave with nothing to read. Yes, yes, take it. Take it if you must. Yes, good day, good day, good day to you, too. Oh, Mm. Is he gone? <laughs> <laughs> There's more than one way to get a pagan to read the word. <laughs> oh, 
He doesn't know it yet, but next he's going to confiscate Paul's epistles. <laughs> oh, he's such a hard head. Wouldn't surprise me if even Paul can't reach him. And beloved, I, I, I do pray for that man. I do pray. I do pray for him every day. I, uh, I'm afraid I'm not much of a, an example of the Lord to you. It bothers me. My brother James had a temper too. He, he was worse than I was. I am. I beg your pardon? When did I, what? Oh, oh, when, when did I first see the Lord? Well, oh, beloved, I'll never forget that day. You see, Andrew and I had to deliver my father's salt-preserved fish to his customers in Jerusalem. On this, on this one journey, we kept hearing about a, a new prophet called John the Baptist. Found him at the Jordan River. He was a brawny, wild-haired giant, clothed in animal skins, physically strong, spiritually intense. And when he baptized me, he taught me how to pray at the same time. Held me under so long, I came up sputtering the sincerest prayer of my life. <laughs> What? Oh, what a voice the Baptist had. He could outbellow a camel. And he often had to. But you, you couldn't fail to hear his message. Repent! I baptize you with water to prepare you for the one who is coming. He will baptize you with the fire of the Holy Spirit. The one who is coming. I first saw Jesus on a, a beautiful spring day on the Jordan River, crossing called Bethabara. Andrew and I were hoping the Baptist baptized there in the sunny, cool current. And suddenly I, I sensed a strange quiet. I, I looked up to, to see the Baptist gazing at the far shore. There was a a solitary stranger stepped into the water, came, stood before the Baptist. The, the Baptist was usually fiery. He was, he was subdued that day, and he said, Do you, do you come to me when, when it is I who should be baptized by you? And the stranger said, Let it be so now. We must fulfill all things righteously. Well, the Baptist baptizes him there. And as the stranger leaves us, the Baptist turns to Andrew and me and says, Do you see? Do you see the Holy Spirit descend on him like a dove out of heaven? This is he. This is he for whom the world has been waiting. Now follow him. Well, we followed him. When we caught up with Jesus, I, I, I didn't know what to say. I just said, Rabbi, Rabbi, uh, 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 where are you staying? <laughs> and Jesus turned and said, Come and see. Well, beloved, we spent all that day with him, talking about everything in the world, and then around the fireside that night. The next morning, Jesus asked Andrew and me to go north into Galilee with him. And on that six-day journey, I, I, I observed Jesus very closely. I, I sensed in him things that I'd never seen in anyone before or since. You know, that, that, that he was intelligent and, and warm and loving, good, goes without saying. But, but in him, these were not aspirations. They were accomplishments all made solid by a total command of mind and body. Scriptural scholarship vast. <laughs> Yet, 
He enjoyed good company, everyday conversation. Oh, but when he spoke with someone, when he talked with you, beloved, Jesus knew your needs, your heartaches, your dearest dreams. And from that day forward, you were never the same. And, and he invited Andrew and me to follow him. I, I still don't understand it, beloved. I, I, I'm sincere about that. I really don't. I, the only thing that gave me the courage was from the first moment I saw him, I said, he needs a friend. And, and, I th and this may sound strange to you, but I felt that I could be that friend. And that's exactly the way it turned out. Well, oh, when Andrew and I got to Capernaum, I ran to get my brother James, and he hurried to get his brother Simon Peter. Now, Simon Peter was already known all around the Sea of Galilee for his stormy, emotional nature. And then we got Philip and Nathaniel, too, because we, we wanted them all to meet Jesus. Beloved, you, you must understand something. We were, we were very ordinary men. We, we had no education but, but our trade and, and what we heard growing up in the synagogue. But Jesus spoke to us in ways we could understand. I will make you fishers of men. It'd be a long time before we even began to realize what he had in mind. I remember. I, I remember our first lesson, our first shock. It came when Jesus gave us his view of the Messiah. Now, now we and, and all Jews were looking for another, another Joshua, another King David who would, who would drive out the Roman parasites forever. And Jesus proved to us from Scripture that not just Israel, but all of the Gentile world was to be saved. The Gentiles. And he... He also showed us that the Messiah was not, not only a lord of battle, but a prince of peace, and that his kingdom would last longer and be greater than the Romans, because it would be where they or any like them could never invade or conquer it. It would be in the hearts of good people who love God and treasure peace. That's you, beloved. The kingdom of God, I didn't understand it for a long time. But I understand it better now every time I look into your faces. Miracles. Did, did, did I see miracles? Oh, yes, beloved. I, I saw many miracles, some, some before great numbers of astonished people. Like when Jesus changed water into fine table wine at the wedding in Cana. You know, it was in... It was in that same city. Yes, that a nobleman came to him. He, he was seeking healing for his sick boy who was in faraway Capernaum, yes. And as that grief-stricken father found out when he got home, his boy had been healed, e even as he had talked with Jesus. Oh, oh, Jesus cured so many. There was the, the blind man, the man born blind, the lame man of the Pool of Siloam, my favorite, my favorite miracle, I would, I would have to say the feeding of the thousands. Yes, yes, possibly because it meant so, so much to me personally. You, you see, beloved, Jesus' miracles had more than one purpose. They were public proofs that he was who he said he was, but they were also private signs to us, his disciples. And when we, when we got through feeding 5,000 hungry men and their families with what that little boy had in his basket, five small barley loaves, a few salt fish. I began to understand. Little could be much in Jesus' hands.
And he could take the little that I was and make me into something useful for his great purpose. Do the same for you. Now, I decided right then that if Jesus were willing to attempt the impossible, the least I could do was cooperate. <laughs> After that, the crowds grew. I don't blame them. Best bread I ever tasted. <laughs> we took up 12 baskets of leftovers, had them for supper that night. Uh oh. Hate, hate, hate Jesus. Hate Jesus. Speak up, young man. Speak up. I, oh, yes, if the people loved Jesus, why, why did the temple authorities hate him? Yes. They, they preferred their kingdom to God's. The temple spies began to follow us everywhere. Then Herod arrested John the Baptist, had him beheaded. And everything Jesus did took on a new urgency. He chose six more of us to become his 12 messengers, apostles. It was Matthew, the ex-tax collector, and his brother James. It was Jude Thaddeus, my nephew, Th Thomas the twin, Simon the former zealot, and Judas from the town of Cariath. He spoke to us that day in unmistakable terms. He said that he needed a small group of men but men who knew precisely what they believed and why. We were not to judge people. We were not to judge people. We were to show them how to be released from the sin enslaving them, how to be forgiving and to be forgiven how to find new life-transforming relationship with the Father. We were to proclaim the kingdom of God on earth. It was a day to choose, and we pledged ourselves to him. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the grave, the fame of it flew before us and struck deeply into the hearts of the priests. What people wouldn't want a king who could raise the dead? Could all the legions of Rome defeat an Israel led by such a power? This was what the priests were afraid the people were thinking, and they were right. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, thousands greeted him, waving palm branches, putting down their clothes for a, for a pathway for the colt that he was riding on. And they shouted the traditional greeting for a victorious king of Israel. Hosanna! Hosanna to the son of David! And the priest trembled. It was obvious to all who had eyes. If Jesus wanted the people to make him king, all he had to do was say so. And right then, they decided to kill him. That night at Lazarus' house in Bethany, when Peter demanded that Jesus save himself, he got the most terrible rebuke. Get thee behind me, Satan. You're thinking as men think, Peter. See these things as God does. From that hour, Peter carried a hidden sword. A few nights later, on the eve of Passover, we, we had our last supper together on, in the upper room of a house owned by Mark's parents. I believe most of what Jesus said that night, you, you know from Matthew, Mark and Luke's gospel, but I, I have a few remembrances of my own. I, I remember after supper, Judas got up and went out on an errand. Wasn't supposed to do that, the Passover. We, we all felt a tremendous heaviness come over us, and Jesus, Jesus knew, but he didn't spare our feelings. It was as if he was saying, now, you're no longer disciples. Now you're ministers. Now you must stand. Love one another. If you love one another, 
the world will know you're mine. The hour is coming when all of you will run away and leave me. But I'll not be alone because the Father's always with me. At that point, Peter leaps to his feet and says, Master, Master, I will never leave you. I, I'd lay my, my life for you. Would you, Peter? Peter, before the rooster crows, you'll have denied three times you even know me. When I say I go to my Father, your hearts are filled with sorrow, and yet I go that you might receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit, your understanding and your power. Without him, you'll accomplish nothing. But if I go, I'll come to you again, and then nothing will ever take away your joy. Don't be afraid of what the world will do to us now. I've overcome the world. And then Jesus prayed that none of us be lost in what was coming. And we followed him out into the clear starry night, up the dark ravine of Kidron, along the temple walls, their drains gushing the blood of thousands of Passover lambs now being slaughtered on the altars within. I'll never forget the feeling that came over me when I watched Jesus step across that coursing scarlet flood. Before long, we'd come to our favorite garden spot, Gethsemane. He asked Peter and James and me to, to stay near him while he prayed. And in the moonlight, we, we saw him cast himself to the ground, stricken of soul. We, we, we wanted to go to him and give him what comfort we could, but, but we, we, we never interfered with his times of prayer. I, I sat down against an olive tree. What seemed like only a moment, I, I let my eyes close. And the next thing I knew, Jesus' hand was on my shoulder. On his face, with dark sweat, like drops of blood. And oh, the sadness in his voice. John, could you not watch with me this little while? My best friend, my Lord, had been in the lake of fire. I'd been asleep. Peter cries out a warning. Yes, Peter. Yes, I, I see them. Helmets, spears, torches coming up from Kidron. Master, we must leave here. But Master, Master, they're coming to arrest us. But the, Peter, he... Look, leading them. Judas. Judas! The soldiers sweep in through the gates. Jesus steps forward and confronts the captain. Who do you seek? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. The soldiers fall backward to the ground. Such was Jesus' power over them had he chosen to use it. Again, Jesus commands the captain, it is I you want. Let these go. The captain hesitates, bewildered by his own weakened will, then motions to his men. Peter leaps forward, sword in hand, and cuts off the ear of Malchus, the high priest's servant. Jesus intervenes. Peter, put away that sword. Shall I not drink this cup that the Father has given me? With that, I panicked. I ran into the olive grove. Coward that I was, I, I hid myself among the trees. Somehow in the moon shadows, Peter finds me and he wants to follow the retreating line of torches. And I say, no, Peter. No, they, they, they let us go once. They, they, they won't again, Peter. Why should we risk that? Because we love him. But, but Peter... <sighs> yes. 
because we love him. We caught up with the temple guards as they entered the courtyard of the house of Annas, the ex-high priest. And next to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, the most powerful man in Jerusalem, there was a servant girl keeping the door. And somehow she remembered me as the fishmonger boy from Galilee, but, but not Peter. Aren't, uh, aren't you one of this Jesus' followers? No, certainly not. She believes him and, and lets him in. Inside, the guards have started a fire, and as we warm ourselves, another one notices Peter. You! You look like one of this Nazarene's men. No, I, 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 I wouldn't know the man if I saw him. Inside the house, is, there's a commotion. Jesus is led into the courtyard. There, there's a bruise on his cheek, on his lip, a trace of blood. He looks toward us, but for our sake, he gave no sign. He knows us. Another guard confronts Peter. Here! You! You were in Gethsemane tonight. I was not in Gethsemane tonight. You were the one with the sword. Sword? I'm a fisherman. I wouldn't know what to do with a sword. You were the one who protected him. Why would I protect a man I don't even... No. A rooster crowed. And in Jesus' eyes, I saw haunting sadness as they led him away. Outside the compound, Peter weeps. The stones of the alleyway grind his knees, his hands, even his face, and he howls to the night sky, Lord God! Have mercy on me and Judas Iscariot! But I felt no pity for Peter. Does that surprise you? I didn't deny the master. But then, Jesus' words return from the dark garden, John. John, could you not watch with me this little while? And I see my own sin against him. Outside the city walls, the sunlight warms us as we follow to the place where the Romans like to kill our people. A little hill called Golgotha, shaped like a human skull. Peter and I hide in the mob, afraid of arrest. And with Jesus are two thieves. The Romans crucify them first. They resist, screaming, struggling like mutilated animals. And then... Then on the ground between them, Jesus lays himself on his cross. He offers his hands and his feet. And I remember his words, no man takes my life, I lay it down of myself. Iron spikes, falling hammers, blood spurting up from wrists and ankles, oh God. <laughs> They raise the cross, and the full weight of his body falls on his flowing wounds. Still, he does not cry out. A Roman soldier raises a ladder, tacks a sign above Jesus' head, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. The Roman governor has made a joke. Angry Pharisees push past us. Take down that sign. He is not our king. Roman spears push them back. We have our orders. It stays. And so, in mockery and jest, he is first proclaimed to the nations. Jesus speaks. Ha! 
Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even now, he prays for the soldiers at the foot of his cross, gambling for his clothes. And I realized something. They crucified him on orders in pagan ignorance. And these Pharisees, looking on so self-righteously, they condemned him, thinking they were serving God. But what of us? One of us is 12. For three years we followed him. We saw his signs and wonders. We learned the secret of who he really was. And still we betrayed him. We denied him. We deserted him. And I see the damning difference. We knew what we did. Four women approached the cross. Brave women weeping. Jesus' mother and her sister, the mother of Matthew and James and Mary Magdalene. Jesus' mother looks at me, terrible pain in her eyes. Peter, I'm going to her. I don't care about the risk. My life means nothing to me now. What I, why should I be afraid? My heart breaks. Where the cross is planted, Jesus' blood and the earth make dark red mud. His swelling ankles disjointed by the iron spike, lacerated knees, cramping thighs, modesty outraged, his whip torn chest and arms heaving for breath. Beneath the blood-dripping thorns, his eyes find me. He's always known my thoughts. Can he read them now? Does he know my grief, my pain, my sorrow? His eyes move between me. And his mother. She comes to my arms. He rises up on the nails. Woman, behold your, your son. Son, behold your mother. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus stares at the horizon, his eyes dancing madly as if seeing, seeing horrors even he who casts out demons cannot bear to look on. He rises up on the nails. <laughs> My God! My God! Why have you forsaken me? It is finished. For uh, into thy hands I commend my spirit.
a spear point rises, gores into Jesus' side. Blood and water gush into the dusty earth. Blood and water, the certain mark of death. Now come Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. They had dared to go to Pontius Pilate and beg for Jesus' body. While he lived, the discipleship was compromised by fear, hesitation, and prudent concealment. Yet now, no sooner is he dead than by their presence here, they openly declare for him. And Peter, too, standing with me for all the world to see. I think of Jesus' words. When I am lifted up, I will draw all men to me. Even now it's working. The strangely compelling power of the cross. We raise a ladder, extract the stubborn nails, and take our murdered master down. He ends his life as it began, cradled in his mother's arms. We follow Joseph down the hill to his private garden and a new cut tomb. With Peter and I carry Jesus' body inside. And with Nicodemus' hundred weight of myrrh and aloes, we give Jesus what burial we can. There's a, there's a silken napkin for his head, a body shroud of finest woven linen, long to cover front and back. I, I carefully arrange it around his shoulders and his arms as if it would warm him in the chill and dampness of the tomb. Then, then something evil, hovering, hovering, cra craving entrance to the tomb or into us. Peter, do you hear it? Whispering, mocking, I will sift you now like wheat. You who also are forsaken a day, a night, another day and night in fearful anguish and despair. Peter and I hide thinking on all we've seen and lost. Over and over in my mind go Jesus' words from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you... There was no doubting what it seemed to mean, and yet, yet there, was, there was something more, there was something familiar. <laughs> Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. I, I knew that it, my childhood, my child, something from the synagogue. My God, my God, why have you, you forsaken me? Was the first line of a psalm of David. Was Jesus in his deepest agony praying David's prophecy? Or was he just despairing? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words that I cry? I am poured out like water. I number all my bones. They pierced my hands and my feet. 
Oh, they part my garments among them and cast lots for my clothes. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake their head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. He trusted in the Lord. He trusted. <laughs> Some people don't like these. But I acquired a taste for them from John the Baptist. <laughs> That's right, locust and wild honey. Care for some? Anyone? <laughs> All the more for me. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, hey, Jesus, had a wondrous singing voice. How many of you knew that? He did. In fact, all, all the disciples loved to sing. All except Judas. Judas never sang with us. I, I don't know why. He had a fine speaking voice, too. But, but we used to love to sing with Jesus as we walked along the high roads. We were sharp, flat, Peter just loud. <laughs> But would you, uh, would you like to sing well, one of Peter's favorite songs? Yeah. Would you? Good, good, good. It's a, a very easy one. Uh, uh, Andrew wrote the words to this, and I, I made up the music myself. It, it, it goes like this. You'll, you'll get it very quickly. Lord God Almighty, Thou art holy, maker of the sea and land, the universe and skies. Lord God Almighty, Thou art holy, dwell within my heart and mind, my fingers and my eyes. Lie, la, lie, lie, lie. and skies, Lord God Almighty, Thou art holy, dwell within my heart and mind, fingers and my eyes. Lie. I was, I was thinking as I was singing there of the time that Peter was walking along and he was really into the spirit of that song. He, he had his eyes raised to heaven, his hands lifted in praise, and he fell right into an irrigation ditch. <laughs> oh, how he <we> laughed. <laughs> Andrew and I tried to, tried to help him out, but he shrugged us off and wouldn't allow us to. <laughs> oh, but it was only a mile or two before he was his normal outgoing self again. <laughs> I, I suppose I, I shouldn't be so blatant about it, but Peter was my favorite. You, you just couldn't help liking the man. 
He was a, a walking bundle of outrageous extremes. <laughs> no, one, no one praised and encouraged Jesus as, as much as Peter did, or interrupted and interfered with him as much as Peter did. <laughs> but, but I'll tell you something, beloved. Peter was never the same after the Lord let him walk on water. <laughs> it, it's true. It's true. Walking on water is a heady thing, beloved. <laughs> it, 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 it changed you, too. <laughs> oh, but, but he, was, he was so courageous after that. It was just a few steps, but, but it, it gave him... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, hey, uh, these little legs get in your teeth. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'll never forget Peter. He, would, uh, he was, he, he, he couldn't seem to get over the fact that, that he felt Jesus wouldn't forgive him. That was his problem. But, but no sooner had Mary Magdalene come and claimed that the tomb was open and the body gone than Peter was up and, and dragging me out the door. Oh, beloved, how we ran through the streets of, of Jerusalem that morning. Only this time, this time, I arrived first. <laughs> I, I saw the soldiers watch for us, but no one was around. The, t the tomb was open and the stone rolled away, but I'm afraid to go in. I, I, Peter comes running up takes one look and goes directly into the tomb. I follow him. <laughs> the body's gone. Peter. But look. Look, the linens. The linens. If, if someone stole the body, would they strip it first? There'd be no need to. Peter, these, these grave clothes have not been moved. Look, look here, the, the shoulders, you see these folds, the arms? I, I arranged these folds myself. I am the resurrection and the life. Do you remember, Peter? At Lazarus' tomb, I am the resurrection and the life. I believe. I believe, Peter, that something wonderful has happened here. Yes, yes, he's raised our temple up again. Jesus is alive and he's coming to us. Peter, we, we must tell the others, Andrew, James, Jesus is risen. He's alive. Philip. Philip Nathaniel, Jesus is risen. He's alive. had found all the twelve, except Judas, and Thomas, who'd believed his doubts and left Jerusalem. 
we met again in the upper room. And this time, Peter had difficult news. Brethren, I, I hate to tell you this, but Judas is dead. Ashamed of what he did, he hanged himself. Now there's vengeful approval in the room, and, and Peter rebukes it. Are any of us without blame? Can we not follow the master's commandment just once and not judge Judas? Let us pray for ourselves that we fall not into a worse temptation. And then Mary Magdalene spoke. I have seen the Lord this morning outside the tomb. Seen the Lord? Well, well Mary, I, I, I was in the garden this morning, so was Peter. We didn't see him. Why should he appear only to you? Well, why, why shouldn't he appear to me? B -b -b because I'm a woman. Maybe the Lord's trying to tell you men something. <laughs> There was no doubting her sincerity, but I doubted. <laughs> and just then, there was, there was a sound in the shadows by the, by the door. And into the light stepped Jesus, his, his arms open in greeting. His, his face was smiling, and he said, Shalom. Peace be to you. We were petrified. <laughs> I, I, I hesitate to tell you that, beloved, but, but we didn't want to come near him. And he said, don't be afraid. It's me. John, come here. Well, I had no choice but, but to take his hand. It was warm, real. The nail wounds were almost healed. He showed us his side. The imprint of the spear was closed and fading. And we began to realize Jesus had returned to us, not as a, a spirit or vision, but he himself in the flesh, like he said he would. From the cross and the tomb, death itself could not hold him. Oh, beloved, how we praised God that day. He stayed all that night with us. And, and then just, just before he left, he, he breathed on us and said, Receive, receive, receive the Holy Spirit. And then... Just as quietly as he'd left, he, he was gone down wooden steps and, and out. I can see him there in the cold, windy night. Jesus appeared again to us in, in Jerusalem, and this time Thomas was with us. Now, now, Thomas had said, unless I put my finger in the nail wound <laughs> and and my hand into his side. I will never believe. Now, Thomas, Thomas was a strong man, and he desperately wanted to be sure. Well, Jesus knew Thomas' boast, and he made him carry it out. Thomas fell to his knees. My Lord and my God. Jesus looked at Thomas, and then at all of us, and said, Have you believed? only because you've seen? Blessed are they that will never see, yet will believe. He was speaking of a faith far greater than we, his twelve, would ever have, beloved. He was speaking of a faith like yours. Then Jesus told us to go home. Home! Galilee, and home we went. We worked on my father's neglected boats. We scraped and painted hulls, repaired rigging. Frustration, fear, because no word he'd said he'd come to us. We fixed sails and mended nets. Still nothing. Suspicion, doubt. Had we really seen 
what we thought we had seen. And now, Thomas is emphatic. He said, he is coming to us. Why do you doubt? Well... <laughs> the next morning, Peter leaps to his feet and says, I'm going fishing. We said, we're coming with you. Fished all night, caught nothing. The sun came up red on the water. I knew it was going to be a hot day. And as we pulled closer to the shore, I noticed a, a solitary man standing on the beach. He called out to us, Lads, have you any fish? No! We've caught nothing! Try the next landing! <laughs> Cast to the right and you'll find... Well, instantly, Peter and I lock eyes. This preposterous proposition we'd heard once before. <laughs> we cast the nets to starboard, and suddenly they're full of fish, fat, choice, hundreds of them. Peter, it's the Lord. Peter immediately dives overboard and swims to shore. <laughs> and, and then we, we follow along in the boat, pulling this enormous catch of fish. And there on the beach is Peter and Jesus. Oh, they've, they've started a, a fire of coal. They're, they're baking bread. They're ready for the fish. And Jesus said, Come, eat with me. Oh, beloved. Beloved, it was like, it was like old times. Good fellowship by the lake. Hot food. But oh, the life in him. The life in him, beloved. I, I can still see those eyes that I close with coins in the tomb. Those eyes so vibrant and alive. Well, the stories I could tell you, beloved. Jesus returning to the Father, the Holy Spirit descending on us at Pentecost, and, and we did preach fearlessly. We gained power, beloved, believe me. We preached in the streets, in the temple itself, and thousands believed. The Jewish church took root, but it was in our, our first Gentile mission when we began to evangelize the Gentiles that the Romans, our most dedicated enemies in scorn gave us the name that has blessed us. Christians. Then, then tragedy. Tragedy sowed the gospel to the farthest reaches of the Roman Empire. The Jewish zealots threw the Roman garrison out of Jerusalem. The Romans returned with a legion and laid siege. They took no prisoners. A forest of crosses began to grow around the holy city. It was only by a, a miracle leading that, that Jesus' mother and I escaped to Ephesus where Timothy's church took us in. Soon after that, the Romans broke into the inner city. And Jesus' tearful prophecy came to pass. There was not one stone left standing upon another. Over one million Jews were exterminated. Beloved, beloved, be wary that the world never sees such a thing again. I beg your pardon? Excuse me. I, I, would, would, would I write a gospel? Oh, beloved. Beloved, I... Copying, as we do here, is one thing, but, but, but writing, that's, a, that's another thing completely. That's, you see, Matthew and, 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 and Luke and Mark, setting down Peter's words, wrote primarily from the Jewish point of view. They explained Jesus' life and ministry as the long-awaited Messiah of Jewish Scripture, and that he was in the light of the prophets. But to the, to the Greek and, 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 and the Roman mind, this, this means very little in terms of their tradition. You see, what, 
What they need is a, is a, uh, a different but faithful approach. I can only pray, seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I'm considering telling you something, beloved. I, I, well, I hesitate, not because I don't love you or trust you, but only because I, I don't know that I have it clear enough in my own mind to make it understandable. The commander, not long ago, began to uh, allow me uh, a walk each day out there on the sea cliffs. And it was there on the Lord's day that I came into the Spirit. I heard, I heard a voice behind me. It, it was like a, like a trumpet in the, in the sunny air. I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. I turned and saw seven golden candle stands. And walking among them, one like the Son of Man, his, his hair glistening snow, his eyes fire, his face the sun in all its power. And he spoke again, this time like mighty falling waters. Write this revelation in a book and send it to the churches. It seemed the heavens open. I, I flew above a sea of crystal to the rainbow throne of God. A book the prophecy of the Lamb's ultimate triumph, sealed with seven seals. The Lamb of God breaks the seals and tribulation dawns, war and pestilence, famine and death ride across the earth. The powerful and the rich, the weak and the poor, the famous and the obscure, all hide themselves in mountains and caves. God's wrath has come. Who can stand? And then from out of, out of the sky there came a fiery, a, a, a fiery uh, a star. He falls into the sea, and there's a mountain of fire. The, the cities of the nations are burned to dust in an hour. They all perish. Millions, millions and millions die. The rest pray to die, but death eludes them till its own good time. And now no lamplight shines. No working men, no careful wives, no, no children play. The voice of the bride and the bridegroom heard no more. And then, when I thought it had ended from heaven, there comes a golden city. From all of time, from all the world, the raptured faithful gather at the gates, and they open angels the heavenly hosts, and Jesus. He said, come in, come in. This is the place I've prepared for you. The Father awaits us. Oh, beloved. It was, it was a miracle that my mind contained all that the glorified Christ had revealed to me. Oh, poor Papias here. He'd, he'd heard speaking in tongues, but nothing like this. <laughs> the thing that went over and over in my mind was the Lord's words, write the revelation. So, I, I must write. But Alpha and Omega. the ministry of Jesus might best be understood by the Gentile world as, as the Logos, the Word, the wisdom, the order, the logic of God come to earth. The mind of God made man. Yes, yes, they understand that. And this has been from the beginning. 
Jesus' sinless life and self-sacrifice on the cross, a perfect demonstration of the Father's eternal love for mankind. Yes, yes, Alpha. And even then Jesus was there with the Father and will be there, Omega, until the end when all of the revelation that I have seen comes to pass. Yes, it's as Paul taught me so many years ago. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Timothy, oh, Timothy, come in, come in, my son. I, I, I'm sure you know most of my guests. Well, no, no, I, I'm certain they won't mind, but I... Beloved, uh, Timothy he, he seems to have something to say to me. Would, would you excuse us? We have just learned that the Romans in the Greek city of Achaia, where he was preaching, the Romans have crucified Luke. <laughs> oh, Luke, beloved physician. his mortal voice. But the God-whispered words he gave us, they will never stop them now. Jesus said that his church would be a costly bride. And as always, his prophecy is true. Her price has proven to be unspeakable terror and rivers of blood. It began with Stephen. When Paul, not yet one of us, had him stoned in the streets of Jerusalem. My brother James was next, beheaded for preaching the risen Christ in the temple. Matthias, tied to a cross, draped with carrion, eaten by vultures. Jude Thaddeus, crucified and shot to death with arrows. Oh, Nathaniel was skinned alive and crucified in double agony. Philip was hanged from the column of a Greek temple. Andrew crucified in Egypt, Matthew beheaded in Alexandria, Mark dragged to death behind a chariot, James Alpheus thrown from Herod's temple roof, Thomas speared by a mob, Simon the Zealot sawed to pieces alive! Peter and Paul were taken in Rome, while thousands of believers gorged Nero's lions in the Colosseum. Paul beheaded on the Appian Way. Peter was forced to watch his beloved wife crucified on Vatican Hill, and all through her agony, he cried out to her, O oh, the beloved, remember Christ! Remember Christ! Glory to 
Peter felt unworthy to die, as Jesus said. So he asked to be and was crucified, head downward. Beloved, if someone comes to you and says, I will believe your gospel if you can give me one proof, tell them. Tell them of these ordinary men who overturned the world and proclaimed to the very end some from their own crosses the life-giving truth of the triumphant risen Christ. A message from the commander. Let me see. God forbid that he's changed his mind about helping the prisoner. Timothy, Emperor Domitianus is dead. The, the Senate has declared an amnesty. The Christian persecution is over. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord God, King of the universe, you have delivered us out of the hands of our adversary. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, then. Thank you, then. Timothy, oh, thousands have died, yes, but thousands more will live. And Papias, the churches will worship openly again. We'll visit them all together. Oh, how they'll welcome us, Papias. And my school, my school, yes, yes. Oh, there'll be so much to do. Uh, Commander, Commander, come in, come in. Thank you for the good news, sir. Uh, uh, when can we leave? Today, splendid, splendid. You, 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 you say, what? The, n now I'll give up helping the prisoners. Oh, Commander, you are a... You are a trial to me, Commander. <laughs> Why did you think, because I am free in Ephesus, I, I would give up helping those men? In Ephesus, Commander, I can help them even more. Yes, 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 yes. So what new condition? Christian instruction for who? For you. <laughs> but if this is some sort of trick, Commander, I... I well, no, no. Well, no, no, of course I believe you. I, I just... Well, yes, 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 I praise God. Praise God, you see there? <laughs> It, it, it just took me unawares, that's all. I... <laughs> Only if I instruct you. But the, the mean that I, I would have to stay here possibly for months. You, you, sure, you certainly can't believe that the Lord would... God's ways are not our ways. <laughs> Where did you hear that? Huh? A footnote in that Gospel of Luke I gave him. <laughs> oh, Lord, why do you answer my dearest prayers at the worst possible time? <laughs> What's that, Papius? <laughs> You'll say if I will. Well, if, Timothy, I'm surrounded. I, but, but would I have time to write in Ephesus? I can't defy the Lord's command. The revelation, possibly a gospel. I. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All right, Papi. 
you go with Timothy to the pier. Tell the pilot the boat for Ephesus will have to leave without me, but you be aboard. Be back here within 48 hours with a barrel of ink, a bale of papyrus, and five flocks of geese worth of quill pens. And you, Commander, so you want to learn about Jesus, do you? Well, you're going to. As I dictate to Papias here, right here, yes, yes, Commander, right here in this cave, you've made it home to me now. <laughs> no, 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 we cannot begin immediately. Go, go, Commander, you'll need your strength. But, but be back here, sunrise after tomorrow. And, and don't keep the Holy Spirit waiting. <laughs> and God bless you too, brother. <laughs> well, wonder of wonders. Well, beloved, we've had good fellowship together. I've walked and talked with Jesus again. As usual, I, I love him more. And I, I see what he has in mind for what remains of my life. A witness that will endure. So if the Father will spare me the days and the Holy Spirit will lead, I will give the churches what they've asked for. A gospel for the Greeks and the Romans. And this will be its message. God. So loved us. He so loved the world that he gave us his only son. That whosoever believes in him need never die, but have everlasting life. Life, beloved, that's what he's offered us. Life has come, death is conquered. Hell itself can never prevail in your life again. This is why, this is why I declare these things to you. What, what my eyes have seen and my, my hands have touched, that you might have victory in fellowship with us. Because truly our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. Oh, beloved, when fear enters your mind, disease your body, death or enslavement your spirit, speak the name of the Prince of Life. Speak the name of Jesus and hell itself will be put under your feet. We're not born of blood. We're not born of the will of the flesh or the will of man. We are sons and daughters of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know this, that when he comes again, and he will, let no man take that from you, when he comes again, we shall see him as he is, and we shall be like him. Oh, be like him now, beloved. Love one another. If you love one another, the world will know you're his. Oh, little children. Love one another. 